So this morning I posted a picture of a book that I'm now reading or listening to on my Facebook wall. It's a book by Paula Coelho, and if you've watched enough of my videos, you know that I highly recommend his books. They're fictional, and they're probably the only fiction books that I read. They're fantastic, and they've been supportive to me on becoming the strongest version of myself. And a big part of my mission is to simply share the resources that have supported me in growing stronger in hopes that perhaps they could support you. And I don't, ever, I don't expect everyone to have the same experience or to, or to uh, receive all of these gifts. They're not for everyone. But anyway, one of the comments that I received on the picture was from a gentleman through what I believe was his truest sentiment from his heart says, be careful when reading this author. And of course, the very first reaction in my body is defense. And it's just, you know, it's who I am. It's uh, what I'm working with. But instantly I began to think to myself, why would somebody say something like this? What exactly is his particular superstition? So of course I begin with prejudice. And I think, boy, you know, what kind of superstition is this guy holding on to that doesn't allow him to expose himself to any ideas? You see, the greatest form of, of slavery is the barring off of particular ideas that might perhaps embolden you to take action in the direction, in a direction that perhaps others would tell you, nope, don't do it. You know, they set up their own rules and their own boundaries. And for whatever reason, they feel as if they need to subject you to those rules and boundaries. And in order to keep those rules and boundaries stable, you've got to keep people ignorant. You've got to keep them blinded from particular ideas. And that's why in my model of personal development, you do not reject any ideas before exploring them fully. Nothing is off limits when it comes to trying to find gems of wisdom that might be hidden under all types of strange rocks. Nothing is off limits if it has the potential to help you grow and become the strongest version of yourself, regardless of where it comes from or what it's called. You have to experience this. So then I began thinking about what should be off limits. What things should we not subject ourselves to? What ideas should we not expose ourselves to. And I often say things like, don't listen to, to music that is aggressive or uh, not even aggressive. Aggressive is a beautiful thing, but violent. Violent is an ugly thing. Violent or watch movies that are violent. And then I began to think, you know, when I say these things, they're merely my experience. And a better way for me to simply place this is when you're growing stronger, when you're becoming a stronger version of yourself, you will find that your body rejects certain things without you having to think about it. There's a sense of intuition and awareness that you now carry with yourself in your physiology, in your heart, in your gut, that doesn't require you to reject anything or to be cautious at all. Because in the same way that if you ingest rotten milk, spoiled, nasty milk, you don't have to be very cautious because your body will instantly reject it. That is the brilliance of your body. It knows at an intuitive level what is poisonous to it. The same, it is, the same as it, it goes with ideas, exposure to ideas. There are some ideas that when you're exposed to, your body simply rejects without you having to do anything about it. So when I hear music or I watch or there are movies that are being played in my vicinity, you know, there's music that's played in my vicinity that simply doesn't resonate with my physiology. I don't have to be vigilant. My body simply rejects it. I don't listen to it. I don't hear it. It could be playing, blasting in my ears, but I don't hear it. So when I say these things like exposing yourself to violent music might not allow you to become a stronger version of yourself. I'm wrong when I say that. What I really mean to say is, in the same way that Jesus describes the kingdom, it isn't so much a thou shalt and thou shalt not, but this is what you'll experience when you find the kingdom. This is what you'll experience when you become a stronger version of yourself. You'll experience that your body will instantly reject certain things without you having to do so. And there is no need for vigilance. 
There are certain ideas that you'll be exposed to that you're simply not ready for and there's no need to reject it. You just set it aside, especially if those ideas seem to be working for other people. And you know if ideas are working for other people by the look in their eyes, not the station that they carry in life or what they call themselves, but by the look in their eyes and the smile on their face. Clearly that idea is working for you, but I'm not ready for it right now. And that doesn't require rejection. It requires sensitivity and openness. So how do you come to this place where you begin trusting your heart and your body, your physiology, your gut, as opposed to always having to stand vigilant and never allowing yourself to be exposed to certain things that might nourish you, even though you've been told that they're evil or wrong or to be cautious against it? The answer is simple. It's the one that I often offer, and that is to breathe into your balls. And when I say this, I don't necessarily mean that you need to have a set of testicles. What I mean is that you come home to the awareness of your body and recognize whether or not your body is unready for a particular idea. Simply rejecting an idea, which means you don't need to do anything, your body just rejects it. You could be told a certain thing a thousand times. You could be exposed to a certain thing a thousand times, but it won't get through because you're not ready for it. We say get through, but really it's not getting through your body. And then there are those ideas that revolutionize you through courage and passion. And the minute you're exposed to it, you know that it's for you, not because of who told you it's for you, not because of anything except for the fact that you're emboldened, your heart rate goes up, your body feels a sense of excitement and all you want to do is dive deeper and deeper and deeper into the idea till it takes over your life and transforms you from the inside out. And then all you can do is share that experience with other people because you know that it supported you on becoming the strongest version of yourself. That is an act of love. But when you hold so tight to that experience and the place where you receive that experience that you begin forcing it on, on other people, you start telling them, ah, this is the way and this is the only way. Look at what I've experienced. Now you're being violent. Be vigilant, my friends. Yes, but be vigilant that you come, that you always retain yourself. Be vigilant that you're always in tune with yourself. Be vigilant that you always trust yourself and be vigilant that you could hear the voice in your body louder than the voices from the outside. Done.